Hello guys, welcome back. And today's video is going to be a review, trying to be as brutally honest as possible because we want the game to be a better, right? So there's no point in pretending that some things are not as bad as they are, okay? So I'm going to try to be as uh, concise as possible and give you as many details as possible, as well as giving you a little bit of more of, uh, you know, not that common uh, train of thoughts that some of the videos might uh, not give you. I'm going to try to make you think a little bit more, a little more in-depth and how the game is going to feel after you actually play it, okay? First of all, let's start with the signal search, which is the banners, okay? In, these, in this panel, we see uh, the premium banner, which is going to be exactly like HSR and Genshin. It's uh, 90 PD with 50-50. Now, I don't know because it didn't happen to me. I don't know if you can fail the 50-50 to a weapon. I don't think you can, but I but I won my 50-50, so I would not be able to tell you if you can on this one, but on the standard banner, which is this one, you can fail the 50-50 to a weapon because that's what happened to me. Uh, yesterday when I got a lucky SSR and I got Hellfire Gears, which was supposed to be a character. Instead, I got a weapon. Okay, so you can fail to a weapon on the standard banner. I don't know about the premium one. It doesn't tell you in the details. I tried to look, but there's nothing I can find there. So this is the weapon banner, 80 PD, 7525. And this is the Bang Boo banner. Bang Boo used to be on the normal banner as well. You could fail a four star or a five star to a Bang Boo. Now they're on their own channel. They're on their own uh, channel, which is called, uh, how is the banners are called. So you can get them for free because those pools are only given to you in two ways. You either get them for free by playing the game or you get them from the signal shop from the with these coins, which are from the signal search. So by uh, pooling on it, you get the coins and then with extra, uh, by, since you pull, you get extra coins. And with those extra coins, you can get extra, a little, a little more pulls for uh, each month but it's really it's really really gated in this in this sense so the only reliable pulls that you can get are from commissions hollow zero events and from the tutorials that you get from uh from playing the game that i will show you in just a little bit okay so this currency is almost almost completely free to play okay if not completely free to play so uh you can get the bang boos from this one and there's many of those and the bang boo are a decent like a really important part of of the combat because they could also they can give you stats they keep, they they have an active uh, skills they join you in the chain in the chain combat so they're really useful and you want to pay attention to those and use the right bang boo uh, whenever you're setting up a team okay so on the last thing on the standard banner you we do have the 300 pulls selector now as you can see i'm at 97 pulls 97 pulls as free to play of course because can't pay any money in the cbt3 i wouldn't have anyway uh, but 97 pulls in 15 hours 16 hours of gameplay i think it's pretty good but there's also the fact that if you think about it it might just be a uh, a peak and then it goes down and it just trip feeds you uh the standard pulls from maybe like hollow zero or shield defense per week it's probably going to be like that and if it is like that it's going to unless you use your uh primos or your jades to pull on this banner which you probably most of people won't do you're gonna need you're gonna need a long 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 time to get to 300 so do not think about getting these anytime soon if you are free to play because what i feel like is going to be uh, a long time uh, to get to 300 okay so now let's check this menu over here so in this menu over here we have the dms which sometimes you get actual extra extra commissions and this is a, one of the way for you to accept extra missions after you go sit through these messages after you do that you have your commissions now on this you get the agents and this is where you get to choose your characters you get to check your characters and stuff like that you have the battle stats you can they tell you what their stats are and then they give you a brief understanding what they do which element they are and what type of characters they are this is the level they use these items you can get them from uh, playing the game they use stamina yes uh, now, speaking of stamina, they removed it from the story, but we'll we'll talk about it in 
in just a second. Uh, those are the base stats. These are the skills. A, B, C, D, E, F are the constellations. I don't know how they're going to be called. Now, on the skills, you can enhance those skills by uh, going ahead and doing the combat simulation for the agent skills. Uh, you, you can make your own uh, setup. So you can use a set amount of stamina and get different assortments of um, of agent skills and chips. So that way you can go ahead and use like, I don't know, 100 stamina to get like 30 uh, low level one or like 15 blue ones, you know, or like or uh, mix them up and get like multiple characters uh, chips instead of just focusing on one. You can customize your, your encounters uh, and then you can level up the skills, the E, the Q and the, the dodge because sometimes most of the time dodge also has some other attacks uh, tied to it. Okay, so those are the, the the skill panel on the equipment. There is the W engine in the middle, and then you have the CDs. The CDs will unlock later during uh, chapter two, I believe. Uh, at some point during chapter two, you will unlock the uh, the music store. And the music store, you can go there and buy some music uh, CDs. And you can also, if you want to see more of those. You can go to the CD and get um, you get the you get the items and then you go to the CD music store and buy buy them uh, from the NPC and it's basically acts like a, a, a banner. You can do a temple and it gives you X amount of uh, of CDs and then you can also use the currency that you get from getting the CDs the extras to buy specific ones you might need. And as you can see, those acts as uh, relic pieces. So they have a four piece and a two piece effect, set effect. So depending on which, which set and how many pieces you have, you can mix and match. You can have a two to two and you can have a four two, right? Uh, depend what you wanna do. And those are independent from the W engine. Because if you want to change the W engine, you can click that and change the engine to someone else. It's not going to replace the uh, the the CDs. The CDs are going to stay there. And you're just going to change the W engine, which is something cool because now you also have the W engine effect, which is the main weapon that the characters are using. Now, moving on... <clears throat> Those are the characters, of course, I haven't been able to play Rina and I haven't been able to play Lycaon because I didn't get him from the banner and the story lets you play Eleven, Koleda and Grace from and, and Ben from Chapter 2. Maybe Chapter 3 will make me play Rina or Lycaon, I don't know, we'll see, I'm not Chapter 3 yet. Now let's go ahead and tackle and, and, go, and go talk about the elephant in the room, okay, the TVs. Now, they did improve the TV, but you have to play a lot of them, okay? Chapter 1 is riddled by it, chapter 2 is not, maybe maybe it's less TVs, but it's still a lot of TVs. Doesn't really change the feeling that you get of, like, frustration, or maybe, like, it, it tires you out. It makes you, f uh, especially in the story and in on the exploration, you get to do a lot of TVs. I think I think I might have figured out why the TV is so annoying, even though, like, for example, in Chapter 2, you don't really have a lot of TV going on. You have, like, maybe 80%, 75% combat and 25% TV. You know why? I feel like it might still be annoying or, like, people still don't like it. Because it's very disruptive. Like, you are fighting, you fight for, like, a minute... And then there's another minute of, of TV, then you fight after like 20 seconds and you go back into another fight, which is like two, three minutes. And then you go back to the TV. The TV is like 20 seconds. So like time wise is nothing, but you need to see through so many, so many loading screens, so much downtime section that you start noticing, you start feeling it. And it kind of starts to bother you. Maybe not everybody. But I feel like that's the problem with the TV. It's not just like how much TV you need to do, which is on a problem on itself. For example, on chapter one, which also is not a good thing, for example. Uh, sure, you can tell me that chapter chapter two gets better, but you can say something like that on a gacha game. If the, the chapter one is what matters. Like new players are going to stay there. I'm going to start the game. I'm going to, going to go... Uh, through chapter one and get bothered get bothered by it and then maybe quit so you need to make maybe chapter one 
the best one, the best iteration of, of TVs. And then maybe you can may make it like more annoying later. Don't, but I'm just saying like chapter one is what matters the most, I would say. But chapter two gets better, but the problem uh, is not the TV anymore or like how much of TV we need to do. The problem now is how often we go back and forth between the combat and between the TVs. Because like the TV is going to be 20 seconds, right? So, and the combat five minutes, it's technically 90 and 10%, but now it's, you need to go through so many times, like, the, you know, so I feel like it's still annoying. Like that's my, be that may be one of the reasons why the TV is still feels, is still feeling like really, really weird. I would rather uh, the TV, the TV, to only stay inside the Hollow Zero because Hollow Zero has it's like simulated universe. So when you go like Zone One, for example, and you go do this, for example, uh, Old Capital Metro Frontline, this is going to be full TV, but every every TV that you go in, it's not like a dead TV, does something uh, important, like gives you more attack, gives you, or maybe it's a shop, you can buy extra bonuses, and once you buy four bonuses, it's going to give you, uh, they're going to merge together, it's going to give you a new one, it's like you get a lot of bonuses, your character gets stronger, you fight different bosses, there's like elite monsters, like fights they can avoid, and then you get all the way to the end, and you fight the, the mega boss, and you finish the run. So that's fun and it doesn't bother me. Uh, however, the TVs that you are that you have to do inside the story and the exploration are more like a puzzly uh, trying to mimic a story. They're trying to tell you a story through the TVs. Like for example, in chapter two, there is a boss running away and you chase them through the TVs and the boss is like a mega TV going around moving. And it, it, it feels like uh, they're trying to make you experience the story only in your head. Like you need to like imagine the story. And then they do either a really, really good cutscene with like insane animations, really, really smooth, nothing to say there, uh, or they opt for the comic book version of the story, which I think it's really good. I think they should just do that and just let us, let us do the combat. And for the fillers in between, they should just give us a, a comic part, right? A comic, like five pages of comic. We read it with like, nice drawing they, they they have really good drawing and they they're also voice acted right so you know so story and exploration are still annoying in my opinion so the tv is you're gonna have to go through the tvs sometimes there are some really annoying tvs they need the tv runs when you need to solve a puzzle but you don't have enough money because you forgot to go to a special uh, hidden tv you need to backtrack there are some loopholes like some some warp warps hole that you can you go in you go from plane one to plane two where there's other money uh, now you get the money you need to go back and maybe there is a, a monster chasing you uh, and then it, it gets annoying it gets it becomes really long even though technically isn't too long it's maybe going to be like five minutes ten minutes overall it still feels tedious to do and every time you see the tv it kind of it kind of conditions you to hate it because you, you want to do the combat, but instead you need to do the, the, the TV first. They show you, they start by showing you the stage and then you go back to the TV, which is frustrating in my opinion. But, right, it is what it is. The Rally Commission, that's, that's something that's just combat. It's nice. Uh, the Combat Commission is just combat. Zero is TV, but it's really fun because it's basically a simulated universe. Every every step you take has uh, consequences, and it's uh, it buffs your allies or buffs the enemies or it debuffs you or like you get corruption. Shield defense is basically MOC. Shield defense is MOC. You do you go through the normal one. This is normal one, and then you unlock the critical one, which I didn't unlock yet because they need to. They require a lot of high level characters and specific attributes, which I do not have. I'm gonna have to. Uh, brute force this because i only have ice characters and physical characters but it is what it is so the story is fine the story the the combat is really good okay the combat is really good now i would say something about the combat it's not as freedom as you might think it is sure it's very dynamic and it's very fast paced you have your E, your Q, and your combo, your like main combo, and then you have the uh, dash combo. Uh, now, first of all, the E 
requires energy it's not cooldown related so as long as you have energy you have your e if you don't have energy or if you for some reason you spent energy somehow maybe an enemy siphoned your energy away you're not gonna have, be able to spam the e as much as you would like to uh the q is the ultimate now you're gonna see a uh, on the top left is gonna be a a counter a score where you keep track of the of the alt when when that when that score reaches 3000 you will be heavy, you you will be unlocking your q now the ultimate is shared so you need to be careful on who is doing it because if you would like a dps to do that you need to switch back to them and then do the alt and then switch back to whatever you were doing before now the combat is really good but it's kind of on rails what do i mean by on rails it means that when you are fighting you're gonna trigger whenever you stagger the monster whenever the monster is dazed they have a bar when once they're dazed they, they take more damage and now you, it's your chance to do your chain combo the chain combo you only have uh, uh, that to do you cannot do anything else you either select one character or the other character uh if you're using character two you can select one or three they come in they do their attack and then they combo with the extra character combo back to your second car character or from the first one or if you have a bang boo with an active skill that actually plays plays in in um, on the field it will be a fourth uh chain right and you know, they apply um ailments or whatever right depends what what type do you have so the combat is fun the parry i like the parry i like the fact that if it's a, a yellow light it's a parry or you can dodge but it's you can parry you should parry or if it's a red light it's an unparryable and that way you need the only way to survive is to just dodge okay so that way it's uh, it, it kind of spice it up kind of mixes it up a little bit more but it's still very linear it's really well made it's nice now early on you don't have your setup characters you don't have your setups you don't have your um, specialized uh, elemental uh, teams not necessarily especially as a free to play right so it's going to be hard for you to apply a certain element because the the damage that you apply builds up and then eventually applies the ailments debuff that you were they were trying to apply so if your eyes you attack them a lot with eyes they're gonna eventually get, get frozen i believe there is a uh, stats for that which is the anomaly build up but i'm not sure if it's gonna to be easy to do as a free-to-play player early on right so it's it's kind of all around the place so you can't really rely on that too much early on so you're gonna have to uh, make do with whatever characters you have in my opinion which is not super fun it doesn't make the combat better uh, it would be better if you could actually specialize in some uh, some ailments like such as shock or burn or uh, corruption right all of those and there are some element there are some elemental interaction for example if you mix a physical with ethereal it becomes disrupted if you mix uh, other type of uh, of ailments they do combine together not everything but they do combine together so keep in mind of those like some of the elements have an actual interaction i don't think it goes the opposite way because i tried the ice with burn and it didn't do anything maybe because it ran off like it, it like it, it wore off and I, I wasn't able to trigger it in time because again the anomaly build up is not super present at the moment as a new player you don't have all the all the gear sets all the things that are like super maxed out to give you a uh, higher anomaly build up but yeah so the combat overall is uh, is fine but you know now on the vr device here there is a a bunch of things and you can also do the uh the multiplayer now on the multiplayer the multiplayer works well okay it's called reckless challenge right the reckless challenge is where you fight those bosses you can also fight them for free like for fun right it doesn't cost stamina uh, so you don't have to um just for to train a boss you don't have to do the, the boss and use the stamina just to get accustomed to the, the move set let's say you can just do turn on reward mode that way you can just either solo it or you can multiplayer challenge on the multiplayer i have tried it it worked uh, now it's hard to it's hard to find because not everybody's level 25 or not everybody knows about it or nobody wants to do this so it was in the close beta right 
So it was kind of hard to find, but we did find a person. Uh, we did the we did this boss. It was pretty good. I mean, they they died, so I ended up soloing everything. But it works basically like a normal normal party of three but if you have two obviously the chain reaction is not it's not going to be that long it's going to be you and the other guy if you have a third guy it's prob probably continuously even more but uh i only i only i was only able to find one guy so we were two but when they get dazed the the chain reaction does appear even in multiplayer. So you press your thing, chain appears on the middle of the screen, you click and you do your chain uh, combo attack, okay? So that's another thing that is, uh, that is nice, it works. Now it's not super smooth, like it's kind of scuffed in the sense that like I, you can't really tell what's happening. Uh, I only did it once. You can see the other guy with you. They we, on this on the on the field. It's not like invisible or something. So it look. It's I think it's pretty fun. I think it's pretty fun. It should be. It's nice that you can do it without rewards. Okay. Now, I want to touch on the income. Okay, the income to me it seems a little bit low because when you go to the overworld, which is not much, it's just the city, right? You can go to your car and go to another map but the, what i'm saying it doesn't doesn't apply to that so it doesn't matter how many maps there are there's nothing to explore and what do i mean by that for example if i go over here there's no hidden chests that give me primos or jades nothing like that is here so i can only talk with uh, specific characters and some npc gives you give you like dailies and stuff like that but besides that since there is nothing on the overworld, there is no way for you to get soup, like too many pulls from uh, from the game per day. Besides the, doing the doing the daily, right? So how many polychromes you get? Not that many. It feels like it doesn't feel like there are that many. Sadly, so I don't know exactly uh, if they're, we're gonna get like some events, which we don't have, we do not have at the moment. The events are here, but they're basically like new character. Try it. And then we have the 10, 10 pulls within seven days. And then we have all do, go do hollow zero, right? And then I had something else that was like, if you do three stages of uh, the first three stages of the MOC, which is shield defense, you get Sokaku for free, which is the blue Oni girl, uh, which is the, the ice one. Uh, this one, you get her for free, which is fine. And then you get like some other extra things, but they're, they're never pulls, right? They're never like uh, polychromes. You don't get polychromes too often. Every five levels, you get these 10 pulls, and you also get five pulls for the Bang Boo banner, which is the coupon, right? Now, those are good and all, but after those are gone, you, you are left with your usual gameplay routine, which is going doing your dailies, doing your weeklies, and uh, doing all of the commissions that, you, that you're given you go and do the errands which are the dailies it tells you what to do one coffee per day check a scratch ticket open the store or you can also do customize a schedule and it tells you what do you want to do do you want to do combat simulation you select i want to do these two you click ok uh, spend battery this is probably the best one because you're going to do it anyway right and then maybe eat a bottle of noodle a bowl of noodle or buy or like take a picture of the cat next to the noodle shop like you do these you go do them and it gives you instantly completes the uh the daily because this is just logging in plus 500 6000 600 right so you can just do these two it's, i don't know if they change every day uh i i didn't pay attention so i'm not sure if they do but yeah you can do that so what i'm asking is less tvs more mo more storytelling with the comic version and then if you want to do the TVs, do it in all of zero. Every TV that we do in all of zero is fun because it's a roguelike. Now, they they thought that the TV times two was going to be a nice quality of life, but which which technically it is, but the most of the time you are required to do precise movement inside those TVs, especially inside the story, right? You need to go to a certain point, do not get caught, uh go here and then go there don't mess up there is a bomb don't step on it right so if you times two it's going to be really hard for you to control your 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 tv or where you are on the tv and you might mess up on top of that 
when most of the part of the stories inside the TV, there's going to be someone talking on the top right. When they're talking, your times two doesn't work and you cannot move as, uh, as well, which doesn't feel good. And it makes me feel like two times speed is completely pointless because you don't want to use it because you're going to mess up where, where you, your movement. And when you want to use it, most of the time you can't even use it because they're talking. So you cannot speed up the talking. You can only speed up the movement. So, which is weird in my opinion, but besides the TV, which I do not think they're going to change too much, to be honest, I don't think they are. That's it, I think. Uh, so let me know what you think. Do you agree with what I'm, what I'm saying? Am I forgetting something? Did you hear something else in on the internet, on, on Reddit? I don't know. Let me know. And thank you for watching. Subscribe, join my Discord, whatever it is in the description, or come say hi when I stream these games on twitch.tv forward slash Jagazin. Thank you for watching and see you next time.